Hello and welcome to a special edition of Centre Pass, the official video podcast of the ANZ Championship. Well, what an off-season it has been so far. By far, the most controversial in the history of the ANZ Championship. Players have been sacked, there's been contract disputes. We've had five new coaches out of the 10 teams to line up for next year. A lot of player movement on both sides of the Tasman. All the 10 teams have submitted their playing rosters for 2012, and we're going to discuss it today to see how the teams are shaping up for the new year. Joining me, of course, is the new coach of the Australian Netball Diamonds, Lisa Alexander. Lisa, welcome along. Thank you, Dan. It's very nice to be here today. Well, Lisa, before we get stuck into the ANZ Championship and the new teams and all how the players are shaping up, let's talk about your experience so far with the Australian Diamonds, a clean sweep against England and a fantastic series against the Silver Ferns wrapping up just last week. Yes, it was very exciting. Lots of close games. Even against England in the last game was an exciting game. So I really enjoyed the experience and the girls certainly came through in that last game. I was just delighted with their performance. So the Australian Diamonds now back on top of the world as world number one ranking. So a perfect start for you, I guess. Uh, in some ways, a, little, a few little hiccups here and there with injuries and so forth. But certainly, I think from what the girls have put out there this year, definitely they deserve the number one ranking at the end of the year. And to finish off so well against New Zealand in an exciting test in Melbourne, uh, I don't think we could have scripted it any better. Sounds good, Lisa. Well, let's get stuck into the teams for the 2012 ANZ Championship. We're going to start with the Wooden Spooners for the past two years, the Canterbury Tactics. One win, 12 losses last year. A very difficult year for the Canterbury Tactics, of course. They were rocked by the earthquake in, in Christchurch. So it was a tough year. Let's take a look at their lineup for 2012. So a few of the mainstays are back for the Canterbury Tactics. Marie Bowden is there, Anna Galvin. Their goal is Anna Thompson and Alan Halpenny too. Probably a big talking point, Lisa, will be the fact that the ANZ Championship has given, thrown a lifeline to the Canterbury tactics, so to speak, and allowed them to have two imports for the 2012 season. Yeah, I think it's very appropriate. I think with everything that's gone on in New Zealand and in Christchurch, it's, it's definitely an appropriate strategy of the ANZ Championship. And, you know, it gives them an opportunity to really strengthen their lineup. So their two imports will be, of course, goal shooter Joe Harton. She can play goal attack as well. And defensively, Stacey Francis. What are your thoughts on those two players? Look, I think Joe Harton is definitely a player of the future. Uh, in our last test that we played against Joe, she was just dynamic. She was shooting well. She was really intense. She was defending beautifully down court. And I think she's going to be a real standout this year for the tactics. Big losses in Donna Wilkins and also Charlotte Kite. What prediction can you make for the Canterbury tactics for next year? Look, I think it's going to be tough for them. I don't think they'll be finishing in the finals, but I think they'll have some good games here and there if they can get Joe shooting well and, and operating well in their group. And I think Stacey Francis will offer a lot of athleticism to their defence end. Next up is the West Coast Fever. They finished ninth in 2011. Three wins and 10 losses for the team from Perth. Lisa, they've got a new coach in Norma Plummer. They've got a bit of a motto called Tough Love for 2012. We're expecting some big things from the Fever team. Oh, look, it's really exciting for Australian netball to see the West Coast Fever with such great young talent and a fantastic coach to boot. So it's going to be a wonderful season to watch them progressing. Seven new players in the West Coast Fever team for next year. Let's have a look at their full squad for the season to come. So some big names there in the West Coast Fever team. Of course, the two bookends in Caitlin Bassett and Susan Furman will return. A lot of young talent in Verity Simmons, Chanel Gomez and Ash Brazel from the New South Wales Swifts. But Lisa, we can't go past, of course, Ebony Beckford-Chambers will be their import from England. But the biggest talking point has to be that of the recruitment of Catherine Cox. She was told she was no longer required by the New South Wales Swifts. So she looked elsewhere and she's found a home with Norma Plummer at the West Coast Fever. So a huge recruit for them. Oh, look, it certainly is. And, and Catherine gets to go back to Perth again, which she has done that before. And look, I think she's going to provide wonderful leadership to the group. She is a, a great leader, she's passionate, and she is really going to help to develop that attack in. And she's really excited, I know, about the challenge of playing goal attack as much as possible, but she's certainly playing really well in shooter as well. So I think you know it provides Norma with lots and lots of options. We're looking forward to the master and the apprentice being Catherine Cox and Caitlin Bassett in the goal circle. Do you think those two will fare Pair, sorry, a pretty formidable combination as the season progresses? I think they can. I think definitely it provides a difference and it is difficult to match up on two such wonderful players. And Catherine actually started her career as a goal attack way, way back. 
And I think she's delighted about the challenge ahead of her. And, and as long as she gets herself as fit as possible to play that position at ANZ Championship level, she is, she is going to be a real thorn in the side for many of the other sides. Norma Plummer's picked up a lot of young talent too in the likes of Verity Simmons, Chanel Gomez, Ashley Brazel. What do you think of the makeup between a lot of experience in the Fever side but also a really good group of young athletes emerging? I think it's ideal actually. I think it's a great mix. Uh, the youth and the experience and even the mid-range players like your An Andrea Gilmore's they really need to step up and show that they can really push for selection, even into diamond squads, etc. So I can see that Norma's got a really talented mix of young and experienced players. So they've got that balance of youth and experience. They'll have a new coach, potentially new leadership as well, a whole new feel about how Fever operate. What can you predict from them for the next year? Look, they're going to be definitely the dark horses. They could pinch a spot in the finals if they can find that right mix in their attack end. They really need to be able to score. I know defensively they've been very strong over the years, but they need to really be able to put the scoreboard pressure on. And I think they have got that end to do that. The eighth place team from last year was, of course, the Central Pulse. It was their best finish in the history of the ANZ Championship. They pushed a lot of teams in a lot of close games. They just lacked the firepower at crucial times. They've recruited very well in the off-season, Lisa. We're looking forward to seeing how this team goes. Certainly under the master coach, Robin Broughton, um, I think this team can really go ahead this year and, and create some havoc in the New Zealand half of the draw. There's no doubt about that. Let's take a look at the playing roster for the Central Poles for 2012. You can see there that they've recruited very well in the off-season and none other than Jolene Henry, the Mystics wing defence, and of course the Silver Fern veteran. She lines up for the Central Poles through the midcourt. Jamila Gupwell returns, Katrina Grant's there again, and of course Caitlin Thwaites as their import. So Lisa, Robin Broughton's done a good job at recruiting in the off-season. She's also got Selby Rickett from the Steel as well. Oh look, definitely. It's a very strong line-up across the board and mixed in with the uh, many of the current Wellington Pulse players. So, look, a great, great recruiting drive from Robin, and she is a terrific coach. She will get this team together. They will be fit. They will be ready to play next year, and they're going to provide a thorn in the side for many of the New Zealand teams. We mentioned Caitlin Thwaites will be the Australian import for the Central Pulse. She'll be joined in the circle by another Silver Fern in Paula Griffin. So they've added two Silver Ferns to the list to join Camilla Lees and Katrina Grant who are floating around that Silver Ferns team and squad. So they probably now have a well-balanced team. They've got experience on their side. How far do you think this Central Pulse team can go? Look, they could pinch a spot in the finals. There's no doubt about that. It's going to be very, very tough. This this next season that's coming up in the championship is going to be one of the closest of all time. So it's very exciting for the fans. For the first time in the history of the ANZ Championship, the Southern Steel did not make the finals in 2011. Four wins, nine losses for the Invercargill-based team. They've got new coaches on board, they've got a few new players, but they've had seven losses from their team from last year. So Lisa, there has been huge changes in the Southern Steel franchise. Yes, there has been, and that's always a bit of a concern, um, how they can get the group together for consistent performances. But I think with the new coaching group and some keen and enthusiastic players in the steel, that they may trouble some of the group, uh, some of the teams in the New Zealand draw particularly. But I think it's going to be a tough year for the Southern Steel. They're the first team to appoint co-coaches. Natalie Avellino, former Diamonds representative, and Janine Southby, the New Zealand under-21 coach, will be at the helm of the steel. Let's have a look at the roster they've put together for 2012. The steel will be bolstered by the return of Donna Wilkins and Jody Brown into the shooting circle. Demelza McLeod from Australia will be their import player. Of course, Cheryl Scanlon is back. Wendy Frew is back as well. And a lot of local talent in that lineup as well for the Southern Steel. Lisa, probably the biggest thing for the Southern Steel will be that shooting circle. Donna Wilkins and Jody Brown could seriously do a bit of damage throughout the year. They certainly could. And if they can get themselves as fit as possible to be able to run out 60 minutes of high intensity ANZ championship games, I think they can really trouble many of the teams and many of the defence ends. If we have a look at the player the players that they've lost, they've probably lost the biggest names. They've lost De Brain, Liana Leota, Paula Griffin, Selby Rickett, Natasha Chocolate and Danica Whippiedi, who's focusing on the Olympics with the tall ferns in basketball. So uh, they've had mass changes more than any other team. So it's going to be a massive challenge for them this year, next year. It absolutely is. But I'm certain with their, their new coaching lineup, and I think it is very innovative. I think it's the way of the future, actually. 
And I think that they will get themselves together and they will surprise a few teams out there. They've got some real talent on their roster. Okay, Lisa, now time to talk about your old team, the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They missed the finals for the first time in the history of the ANZ Championship last year. They finished in sixth place. Uh, slow start for them last year, but they really built towards the end of the year and were very close to making the finals. They're another team that has recruited extremely well in the off-season. Yeah, they certainly have. Uh, I would be delighted to be coaching that defence end this year. I think uh, next year it's going to be very exciting having Beck Bully, Shani Layton and Renee Hallinan working together as a, as a group and a unit. And they are going to be one of the hardest working defence ends I know in the competition. Let's take a look at the team that Jane Woodlands Thompson, the coach of the Adelaide Thunderbirds, has put together for 2012. As Lisa mentioned, you see there Renee Hallinan from the Melbourne Vixens, Rebecca Bully from the New South Wales Swifts have been brought in to bolster that defensive line. Nat Bomberto will be there. Of course, Carla Borrego, the import from Jamaica, Erin Bell as well. So a lot of depth and talent in the Thunderbirds line. Noting too, they've just named 11 at the moment. The ANZ Championship has given them extension, so they will name their 12th player very, very soon. Lisa, the inclusion of Hallinan and Bully is going to make a huge difference to not only Nat Bomberto, I guess, takes a bit of pressure off her, but a very well-balanced, hard-working team across the board. Absolutely. It really fits with the Adelaide, Thunders, uh, Adelaide Thunderbirds culture. It's a very hard working unit. They will be very fit. They'll be ready to go. And I think it's going to be a wonderful season for them next year. Interesting talking point with the Adelaide Thunderbirds. They've probably been one of the first teams in the history of the ANZ Champs to sign players on multi-year deals. The, the large core of their group are there for not only next year, but the year after. And some even the following year after that. So it's a bit of a new way to go to sign players and have a stable team for, for several years on end. Look, I think it's great for Adelaide and South Australia that they've shown the faith in that group. And also they're very, Adelaide Thunderbirds are very mindful of looking after player welfare. So it's not just about getting them organised for netball. It's about their schooling, university and their work commitments as well. Lisa, sixth place finish last year, only five wins. What can you expect from the Thunderbirds in 2012? Oh, definitely. I think they're a top four chance. There's no doubt about that. And they need their attack in operating at a high level right from the start of the season. So we should be able to see Carla Borrego and Erin Bell being a formidable combination and really giving some of the other teams a lot of trouble. Time now to have a look at the champions from 2009, the Melbourne Vixens. They've missed out on the finals in the past two seasons. They finished sixth in 2011. Things were looking good for the Vixens last season until the injury to Cheryl McMahon and Lisa. That really knocked them out of finals contention. Although having said that, they were very close until the very last game of the season. They certainly were and they're a quality outfit. There's no doubt about that. They are very well disciplined and are very fit and they will give every team in this competition a real run for their money. Julie Hornwig is the coach for another year. The Vixens have had a very interesting off-season period. Let's check out the squad of 12 they've put together for next season. We can see that the main core group has returned for the year to come. Madison Brown's in there, Bianca Chatfield, Julie Coletto. We'll talk about her in the moment. Great to see Sherelle McMahon making herself available again. We're looking forward to her comeback. Jeeva Mentor will be their import player. Lisa, I guess the biggest talking point for the Melbourne Vixens throughout the offseason has been that of Julie Coletto. She was quite keen to be released from her contract. She signed a two-year deal at the start of last year, which would see her through to the end of uh, 2012. She wanted to be released from that contract to play with the Queensland Firebirds. Uh, Nepal Victoria refused to release her. They've, I guess, found happy medium at the moment and Julie Coletta will line up for the Vixens next year. Look, I'm delighted for Julie because it would have meant actually standing out of netball for a year and obviously when we sign contracts, we have to understand that contracts do stand. So I think it's been a great outcome for everybody that Julie has agreed and also the Vixens have agreed to to take Julie on this season. And I'm certain that we'll get some really good mixtures of defence ends. I think that's one of the challenges for Julie Hornweg is to get that defence in and get that mix right. And look, they've got lots of lots of options. That's the key thing. They've got great options in their defence end. And horses for courses, they can match up on pretty much anyone in the competition. So they should be very strong there. One thing that I guess all netball fans are looking forward to is the return of Sherelle McMahon. She Ruptured her Achilles tendon in round eight of the ANZ Champs this season. She, of course, was ruled out of the World Championships. It was a devastating time for Sherelle and all, all netball supporters. She's done extremely well in her rehab and she's, she's already on court training at the moment. She's set to make a comeback. We're really looking forward to that. Oh, I certainly am as well. As the Diamonds coach, I would love to see her back in there. She's just such a tremendous competitor 
and she will really lift the Melbourne Vixens next season and I'm certain that she's going to have a wonderful year and will certainly be the anchor for their attack end. Big loss in Renee Hallinan who of course has gone over to the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Where can you see this Melbourne Vixens team going? They've missed the finals the last two years. They're probably under a bit of pressure with the personnel that they have. They should be performing in the finals each year. What can you predict for them in 2012? Look, I think they're going to really be having to work hard to pinch a spot into the four. It really depends on their attack end, whether Shirell and Kate Beveridge can get that combination going that they had going at the start of the season last uh, this year. So if they can get that going well, certainly defensively, they're very, very strong. So they could be the surprise packet. Moving into the final four now, we're going to look at the inaugural champions, the 2008 premiers, the New South Wales Swifts. They finished fourth in 2011. They've had a very controversial off-season as well. Lisa, a lot of changes to the Swifts playing personnel, but also in their coaching staff as well. Lisa Behag has been appointed the new coach. She replaces your new Australian assistant coach, Julie Fitzgerald, who's been there for 15 years. So a new start for the uh, New South Wales Swifts. It's a completely new start, a fresh start for them too. Lisa Behag is very experienced. She's been a previous Diamonds assistant coach as well. And I think she's chomping at the bit to have a go at this team. And she's still got a real lot of quality across her lineup. So don't be surprised. The Swifts could perform extremely well. Lisa Behag has made five changes from the team from last season going into the 2012 season. Let's take a look at the group that Lisa Behag has put together. So some notable absentees from the New South Wales Swifts lineup. Kimberly Smith, of course, has retired. Rebecca Bullies off to the Thunderbirds. Catherine Cox was not required by the Swifts, so she lined up at the West Coast Fever. But the back line still relatively strong. Sonia McCloma is their defensive import. Monia Gerard, Kimberly Green, Susan Prattley, just to name a few. So Lisa, still a very well-balanced team. Mm. They don't obviously have the firepower that some other teams will have in that shooting circle, but you're a big big rap for Carla Dewalke and Amy Wilde. So with Prattley in there too, they could... They they could surprise a few teams. Look, they certainly could, and they've got great combinations in there. So Susan Prattley, I think, is going to have a great season next next year. She's really determined to do that. And also Carla Dewocki trialled extremely well for the Diamonds, and Amy Wilde's had a great A&L season. They're quality players, and with the right mix and the great defence end that they have, they could trouble many of the teams. Lisa, it was a huge surprise that Catherine Cox wasn't re-signed with the New South Wales Swifts. So she's happy at West Coast Fever. So it's a very different looking New South Wales Swifts team. Without Julie Fitzgerald too, the whole face of that team changes. So what can you predict in this new era for the New South Wales Swifts? How will they go next year? Look, they've still got great leaders across the court. They've still got Kimberly Green, who's just had a fantastic hold netball test series. To be honest, she was one of the driving forces, and I see her being one of the great players in their group next year. Also, Monia Gerard and Sonia McCloma, fantastic defenders. There's no doubt about that, and they will trouble many of the attack ends. And then there's also Susan Prattley, who's an extremely experienced player, and you know she's determined to do very well next year. The Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic will have a bit of a point to prove in 2012. For the first time in the history of the ANZ champs, they were not the number one New Zealand team. That went to the Northern Mystics. Their playing roster is very similar once again, but one huge recruit, Lisa, in Liana Debrain from the Southern Steel. So that defence line is absolutely formidable. It is formidable. Liana Debrain is just a wonderful defender. I, I know that. We've just had to experience that. She is athletic. She's able to get down to the low balls. She can compete with the high balls. She is a complete defender. So let's take a look at the 12 that Nolan Tarua, the Magic coach, has put together for next season. We can see that the three big guns are back, as always. Irene Van Dyke, Laura Langman and Casey Williams. No Peter Scholes, who has retired, but then the big inclusion, of course, Liana Brain. So we're certainly looking forward to that combination of Casey Williams and Liana Brain in that shooting circle. The Magic finished third last year, Lisa, so they missed another spot in the final. They've probably been under a lot of pressure from New Zealand press and media over many years that they should have won this competition. With the brain in there, mm. can the magic go all the way in 2012? Again, probably the question mark will be over their goaling end. Um, Irene obviously is fantastic. It's who is going to be the goal attack in front of her and who's going to really bring them home. And I think they chopped and changed a little bit last year. So you'd be wanting Juliana to really step up and take, take it on and be their linchpin there. An interesting point with the Magic. They've signed 23-year-old South Australian K.O. Watts as their import, which uh, many people might think is a little bit bizarre considering they could have got potentially any player in the world. But, of course, there's salary cap issues and things like that. Mm. 
Do you know much about K.O. Watts in your time in South Australia? And are you surprised that Magic have gone down that path for their import player? I'm not surprised at all, actually. I think their link with Peter Scholes, who's an Adelaide girl, of course, they would have trusted her opinion on who they should go for. And they really needed probably a really tight wing defence. And K.O. has provided that in A&L. And she's had a great season in A&L as well. The Northern Mystics were one of the feel-good stories of the 2011 ANZ Championship season. They finished in fourth place at the end of the home and away rounds and went all the way through to the grand final. They lost that game eventually by nine goals to the Queensland Firebirds. Lisa, they've had a few losses, but they've also gained some great talent in replacing those losses. Oh, they're certainly a... Uh just riches galore at the Mystics. So it's a fantastic lineup and we should see them doing very well this year. Well, let's have a look at the lineup that Debbie Fuller has put together to see if the Northern Mystics can go one step further in the season to come. Of course, the Silver Ferns guns are back. Catherine Latu, Maria Tutayer, Timapara George, of course, retired from international netball, but she's going around again with the Mystics. Kayla Cullen is in there and a Scarlet. And of course, their import Lisa will be the English captain, Jade Clark. She had a great series in the Holden Netball Test Series. She's going to add some great experience and versatility to that Mystics midcourt. Oh, absolutely. Jade Clark is an quality wing defence definitely and I think Magic when they picked her up for that small period of time did a great job. She's also a fantastic centre player as well, very defensive and she will definitely add to their depth. Another player that's going to add great depth to their back line is going to be Charlotte Kite. She's of course played all the netball uh, throughout Canterbury. She played for the Canterbury Tactics the last few seasons. She can play any of the three back defensive positions. So with Scarlett and Kayla Cullen and also Rachel Rasmussen there, there's some good quality and good options for Debbie Fuller. Definitely Debbie Fuller has seen into the future and the future is that defenders need to be flexible and I think the three of those can pretty much cover any position and they can cover any opposition that they have so she's done a mighty job there. Jolene Henry, their uh, veteran at wing defence has moved to the Central Pulse. Megan Dean, their import from last year, the Australian former Australian player has retired. Do you see this Mystics team stronger than last year or on par as their, I think their it's, team? I think it's on par. I think Probably it's got just that slight X factor with Jade Clark being in there as well and also Charlotte Kite. Maybe a little bit of lack of height in their defence end will be the only thing that holds them back a little bit. Down to the last team of the competition, the history-making undefeated Queensland Firebirds, the Premiers from the 2011 season. They stormed the competition last season. They took all before them. Lisa, there's been minimal changes to this group, of course. I guess maybe a big change in the fact that Clint McMenamin has retired, but they can potentially put their starting seven for the majority of their games last season back out on court. Yes, they certainly can. And obviously with Lauren Norse coming back from her knee reconstruction, it's going to be a stronger group because she, they didn't have her available for the finals. But I think Claire McMiniman is actually a really big loss to that group. She was the heart and soul of their defence end and I think underrated. So Rosalie will need to get that mix right in the defence end. Luckily for Rosalie, I think Amy Steele's ready for a breakout season. So really looking forward to seeing her out on court. Well, let's check out the 12 players that Rosalie Jenke has appointed to represent the Firebirds for the season to come. The big guns are there again for the Firebirds. We've got Ramelda Aiken, their import from Jamaica. She's back, as always, as the spearhead of the team. Laura Geitz is there, Alyssa McLeod, Natalie Medhurst, Chelsea Pittman, of course, Amy Steele, like Lisa just mentioned, and a couple of uh, new recruits floating around there too in Shannon Eglund and Jacinta Messer. So, Lisa, there is strength across the board with the Queensland Firebirds. They're the defending champions. They're going to go into this competition knowing that everyone wants to beat them. We know what happened to the team that wins the Premiership the previous year. They have a very disastrous year the following one. We've seen it with the Vixens, the Swifts, the Thunderbirds. Will the same thing happen with the Queensland Firebirds in 2012? Look, I don't think they'll have a disastrous year, but they'll certainly be the hunted. That's the difference, that their video, everything is looked at much more closely. So they will have great challenges next year. And also covering the loss of Claire McMinimum is going to be a big challenge as well. Well, Lisa, it's now time to uh, put your prediction hat on. And I want to see who you think might make the final four. We've seen the playing rosters of all 10 teams for the ANZ champs for next year. Who are the four teams that stand out in your mind that could potentially crack the finals for 2012? Well, I've actually changed my mind this morning having a good look at all of the teams. I'm going to go for the Thunderbirds and West Coast Fever for Australia and the Mystics and Bay of Plenty Magic for New Zealand. So it's going to be a 2-2 split again because it is that's the way the draw is. It makes it difficult for Australian teams to get that third team in. So I'm going for that. 
I'm going to put my money on the Magic and the Mystics from New Zealand as well and back in the Adelaide Thunderbirds and the Queensland Firebirds from Australia to fill the final four spots. Lisa, who is the dark horse? Which team is the dark horse, the team to watch for next season? I think it's going to be the Vixens, actually. I think if they can get their roster right, and I know they're a hard-working group, I think they're going to be the team that really busts through. For me, it's going to be the West Coast Fever. I'm excited to see what Norma Plummer does at the Fever. I'm looking forward to seeing Cox and Bassett in goals. Lisa, in all the new players or in all the players that are back again for another year of ANZ Championship, who is the one player to watch for you in 2012? I think it's going to be Amy Steele, actually. I think she's ready to have a big season with the, with the Firebirds, definitely. And she's itching to make that step up to the Diamonds group. I'm uh, a big fan of Verity Simmons. I'm looking forward to seeing how she goes at the West Coast Fever. What are your thoughts on, on Verity Simmons, our Australian Under-21 rep? Absolutely delighted with Verity. She's coming with our group to Fastnet uh, in a couple of weeks' time, and I'm really looking forward to working with her. Well, Lisa, thank you very much for joining us. It's been great to get your insights into the 10 teams for the ANZ Championships. We want all our viewers to jump onto the ANZ Champs website, uh, sorry, Facebook page, and we want you to register who you think will be the top four teams for 2012. You've seen the playing personnel. You've seen the rosters. We want you to choose who will be your top four. Also, which team will be your dark horse and who will be the player to watch for you. Lisa, thank you very much for joining us. It's been great to have your insights. Good luck for Fastnet coming up in the next couple of weeks. And uh, congratulations on, I guess, the appointment of Diamonds Coach and the, and the success you've had so far. Thank you very much, Dan. Well, we're looking forward to the ANZ Championship next year. It's only four months away. We can't wait to see how it unfolds. The closest season in the history is about to be before us. We'll catch you next year for Centre Pass.